speaking of writing, we, we've, we've spoken about writing before uh, on the show. And, you know, we talked about songwriting with, with uh, a good friend of ours, Alyssa Joseph. I don't know if you guys yeah. ever played with her. Yeah. She's cool, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, she played an amazing set. Uh, and we, you know, we got into the depths of songwriting. But, but this, this month, I want to talk about the context of music. Um, so, I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead off with a quote <laughs> okay. uh, by, sure. by a young, well, at the time, a young DJ. You guys ever heard of Maddie on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, and this, I heard this when he was like really big when we were in high school, right? And so, like, you, you know, he said this and it stuck with me. It's, it's stuck with me since. Um, and, and he basically said, anyone who doesn't understand or doesn't enjoy a certain kind of music simply does not understand the context in which it is to be enjoyed. Mm-hmm. You know? And, you know, because it's kind of true, that. right? Right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. when, like, come, correct me if I'm wrong, when you recommend a song, you're pretty much saying, you know, you should listen to it when you're driving. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you should listen to it, you know, when you're at a party sure. or in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I want to know what you guys think about that, about like, you know, whether or not we missed out on some songs just because we didn't know the context in which it was to be enjoyed, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I know, you know, obviously, I mean, things as basic as, you know, you make a playlist to do this, you make a playlist to do that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, even just, I mean, sometimes the the cultural context that a song is coming from or, you know, I mean... 2016, we saw so much great music come out of 2016 yeah. because uh, and so many things had happened in our world in you know late 2015, all throughout the year, and I think a lot of releases reflected what was going on. I mean, um, Kanye's uh, "The Life of Pablo" had a couple of a lot of uh, you know culturally contextual references oh yeah um, a lot a lot of a lot of rap from last yeah. year i mean sure. solange's record this oh, year so good. was you know <laughs> um i mean even childish gambino's album for being as late in the year as it mm. was is still so culturally um contextual so i mean i think when you think about that context you know even if you're years removed from you know the genesis of that music it harkens you back to that that movement or that time in your life. I mean, and even even beyond cultural context, I think personal context. You know, I mean, how often do you guys hear a song and it's like, oh my god! Like I, I got to meet Neon Indian last year. I saw him at the Union Transfer. Dope. You always meet the coolest yeah. bands at Union Transfer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and I said to him like, dude, your second album got me through high school. It was uh, it was such a cool moment. And like every time I hear that record, like it it reminds me of feeling something on my skin and, and smelling something in my high school. I, I don't know, but that's, I mean, that's that's what context music means to me. A whole different idea based on the idea of context though. Um, you know, we listen to these magnificent older artists like, like Bowie, uh, in particular in my head, like the Beatles and Metallica, uh, going back to like middle school for me, but like <clears throat> the context of like hearing that song when it came out, as opposed to hearing it, you know, 50, 30, even 20 years later, is totally different. Uh, for instance, you know, middle school, I was a big Metallica fan, right? And metal bands now, I, most, I would say, have influence from Metallica, would have taken that Metallica sound and stretched it, maybe made it more aggressive, maybe made it faster, maybe made it slower, but they've taken something like that, morphed it into their own sound, and it almost makes Metallica seem like a less... I know, uh, innovative band, but it's just because they were... The first. Yeah, they were the first, and then people since have adapted the idea. You see that with the Beatles, and I think Bowie a lot as well. Mm-hmm. So it would be cool to see the context of in the moment, like experiencing a debut album like that. Definitely time. A time is such a, a big part of the, of the context, right? Like a time in your life. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like, I mean, there's definitely music that like in the context of a stage of life, like, oh, I'm going to show my 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 offspring um the um, offspring yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah no i'm gonna show my kid uh you know stuff that i listen to in high school when he's in high school yeah. but i think that you know there's stuff that i definitely am not gonna uh show him stuff that i listen to now or right. you know y- you mm-hmm. never know I-, I feel like i don't know do you guys agree with that like like definitely time stages of life like yeah i mean oh, yeah. There, there are a lot of albums out there that are very specifically to when you're you know between the ages of 12 and 17. oh yeah Everyone, everyone, I think has that the album or those bands like Simple Plan for me and Blink One Eight Two. So when when Blink One Eight Two, their new album came out last summer, it felt so refreshing 
for like the context of 2016 sure where like it's it's a very straightforward fun album where like other more technical technically musical uh, albums have come out like 1975's I Like When You Sleep where you were so beautiful yet so in it. Is it my, is yeah it? the mouth it's called yeah. the second one <laughs> it's the second one with all the pink stuff but like when there's albums like that ha- that have that are very much like for me now there are the new releases from bands that have been around for so long and have been such a big part of growing up and whatnot have always again like reminded you of that feeling of like when you were in high school or like you were seeing your girlfriend by her locker and um, like driving on a summer day you know not being in the city being stuck in the suburbs <laughs> you know, <laughs> and all that stuff but um yeah yeah 